This right here is the Orange Pi 800. And this is a little unique for a single board computer. It is in fact within a keyboard. This is the uh, competitor to the Raspberry Pi 400, which is a remarkably similar form factor when it comes to everything from the shape, the IO, really just about everything. I mean, this is a, a teeny bit thicker, but uh, that's about it. Now there are some more differences and primarily to do with the uh, specifications. This thing is featuring the rocket chip RK3399, the exact same processor in the other Orange Pi product. We took a look at the uh, four LTS model. The difference between that LTS and this other than the uh, keyboard is that LTS model does have a little bit more memory as this only has four gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, but it does have 64 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage with Orange Pi pre-installed on that flash storage. This Orange Pi 800 does support dual band Wi-Fi and it supports Bluetooth 5.0, so you can connect your wireless devices to it. And then when it comes to the actual IO on this board, we have a USB type C for power. Right next to that, you have your Pogo pins, so you can use whatever Raspberry Pi accessories or whatever you want to utilize those. We have auxiliary for headphones. We have VGA for display as well as HDMI, just standard. Got a little SIM card slot so you could boot other operating systems. You could actually use the uh, Orange Pi tool to manipulate that if you'd like to. Gigabit internet, two USB 3.0s as well as a USB 2.0. And just based on this layout, you could probably tell that this isn't just some like single board computer thrown in here. It's actually designed to fit this properly. Now, I'm not gonna have to take this apart because other YouTubers beat me to the punch. I don't wanna have to pry it open, which is what you have to do to get it open. But inside you can kind of see what it looks like. Now, in addition to all this, we do have a little tiny speaker. It's better than not having anything at all, I will say that. And on the top here, we do have a little microphone, which we're also gonna be testing when we dive into the operating system. And then over here, we just have some basic LED indicators. Now I'm no expert on keyboards, but I do believe that this is a 75%. It's basically everything you're gonna need. You have your function key row, but you will not have your uh, 10 key over here on the side. Actually setting this thing down and typing on it is fairly comfortable. The keys aren't clicky or anything. I would kind of compare it to a subpar laptop keyboard, not something I'd want to write on for hours on end, but for just general use, it, it's gonna get the job done. And of course, just having this inter integrated is really nice because it's just like having a normal keyboard on your desk but with two or three wires coming out of it instead of one. It definitely saves some room and it is incredibly portable. And honestly one of my favorite things to do with these types of uh, little single board computers, well this isn't really the same form factor, but spec wise one of my favorite things to do is use it as a little server. This is cool because it's got the keyboard included. You could like set it on a bookshelf or something like this and have your stuff plugged into it and you're good to go. Does got that gigabit ethernet. Now for the most part, everything has been fine and dandy, but I'm gonna talk about the primary con and that is the fact it is not a Raspberry Pi. If you don't know, Raspberry Pis are kind of hard to come by at the moment, at least at a, a decent price. This thing comes in about $100 and you can get the Raspberry Pi 400 on Amazon for about 160, I believe, which is definitely more than what MSRP is. And the specifications on this are technically a little better than that Raspberry Pi. But the thing with Raspberry Pi is the software availability is rather extensive. If I go over here to their website, I go to service and download, I go to download. I go to my product, the Orange Pi 800. You can see that is about what we get when it comes to the downloads. Ubuntu, Debian, Manjaro, Android source code, not even an easy install. And we have some more source code and some official tools. Now it is cool they have Manjaro out of all these. That's probably what I would end up installing on this. And one thing that I saw that was kind of funny is if we go under user manuals, they have some folders that seem promising. The schematic, for example, is uh, empty. Not to mention that this is a Google Drive, which Eh, mechanical, maybe? Nope, nothing. How about user manual? It would be nice to have a copy of the user manual. Well, unfortunately, this is just a test report and like a certificate of compliance, which I mean, it's nice those documents are public, but it's not what I was looking for. Now what we're gonna do is actually plug this guy and try out Orange Pi OS, which is pre-installed. But first, since we already have a web browser open here, we might as well check out the sponsor of today's video, 
Linode. Now just real quick, I've been using Linode forever for web hosting, hosting game servers, Nextcloud instances, a whole bunch of things. They make it incredibly easy. Basically, you just pick your operating system, pick your plan starting at $5 a month, and then you are in, you get an IP address, you are in the terminal and you could do what you need to do. If you want something even easier, you can use a wide variety of their one-click installers to get some of these services that I mentioned just a little bit ago up and running with ease. They have fantastic customer support. There's a large community around them. And if you use the link down below or just go to linode.com forward slash tech hut, you could get a hundred dollars 60 day credit to get started today. And with that, let's go ahead and plug this guy in, shall we? And it's really not gonna be a lot. I'm gonna plug in the power here. I'm gonna plug in our HDMI. And then I got this little dongle for my mouse. Just gonna plug that into the USB 2, and that's it. And now right here, we can see Orange Pie booting up for us. And we are in, we are sitting pretty. So you can see it's XFCE. So you're just gonna have standard application and setting menus here. It is a lower powered system. So it is nice that they're using this. Now, before we get into web browser and actual general general use cases that you might want to use for this board. I quickly want to show off their little orange pie config tool, which is kind of a, a TUI based utility or terminal user interface. The default password for everything is orange pie. And in this kind of a interface, you could actually go ahead and change that, make this a little bigger so you can see it better. And here we have some options for system network, personal software, and links to their documentation, which you might check because it wasn't where it should have been. But for example, if we go into system settings, it's gonna load that. You could change your CPU speed and governor. Under software, you can install some third-party software through here, but of course this is Ubuntu. So theoretically, you could just use the terminal. You have Softy, which is a third-party application installer, and they have some other stuff that they recommend here. Let's go ahead and grab Softy. Oh, it's a module within here. Oh, so we only have a couple options. You could get a couple media servers, Docker, and some other stuff through here, not really worth using. You can connect the network through here and all that. This is a really nice thing to have if you're using this as a server and you don't have this actual user interface accessible to you because I could just go ahead and like connect to my Wi-Fi through here, for example. But that's just something I wanted to point out. You can see right here, I have a Geekbench folder. I did go ahead and run some basic benchmarking on this. And of course it has the same processor. So it basically is right in line with the Orange Pi 4 LTS, which is right in the 280 range for a single score and high 600, low 700s for the multi-core score. So you can see the 800 here, the four here, and if we go down just to a regular old Raspberry Pi 4, and here it is. And it's not a huge difference, but 280 compared to 230 and low 700 compared to 650. You do have a little bit of gain there, but in my opinion, the uh, software availability in the Pi community still has a uh, edge, definitely. I'll give up 10, even 20% for that. Back to the uh, orange Pi here. What we're gonna do is open up our trusty web browser. We have Mozilla Firefox, and I'm going to try not to cut the video at all here so you can see how long it takes. Here we are, didn't take too long to open up. And like I said, it is uh, usable. So if I go to one of the best websites in the world, uh, techhut.tv, you can see that if I go ahead and open something, it loads, it scrolls completely fine. There's no major stutters or lags or issues it's having. Can I open up? So I have an HTOP. It does have HTOP, cool. So we'll kind of throw this over here off to the side. Even with a uh, Firefox open here, it's using less than a gigabyte of RAM, which is nice. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this web page open, but I'm also going to open up, dare I, youtube.com. You can see during the web page load, we do have a CPU spike there, but nothing too major. RAM goes up just a smidge. It has taken a bit for this page to load, but that I am not shocked about. If I load up a YouTube video here, this is where we can actually see if it can handle it. Let's load up the uh, Linux rabbit hole, shall we? Good video, you should check it out. Which this video only goes up to 1080p and it defaulted us at 1080p. Uh, it is definitely uh, cooking over here a little bit. We have a 1.9 gigs of RAM, but but the, the CPU is definitely being used. Kind of skip around a bit here. Let's try to see if we can get it to throttle hard. Which there it goes. Now it's, now it's cooking. But once it kind of catches its breath a little bit, it, it goes back into, uh, average territory for 1080p. The actual video itself doesn't have any significant stutters or anything like that, so it is running, it, it's usable. And granted, this is with something in the background here. Now, another use case for this would be uh, light office work, photo editing, and I do believe GIMP is on here, so if we go to graphics, we have the GNU image manipulation program. Go ahead and open that up. This might take a little bit longer to load. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. If we go 
file. We want new. Let's do a 1080p canvas. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Grab a paintbrush, make a new layer here that we could draw on. And it is a little choppy. You can see I'm gonna swing up and over. And it has a little bit of delay following me. So that's just something to keep note of there. And of course, I don't need to open up a text editor and show you that it can type. That's honestly a light web browsing, text editing, emails. That's probably the best use case for this thing. Overall, I like it. I like the form factor. Um, tell me down below, what do you think of it? Is buying something like this, a Raspberry Pi alternative, worth it to you? I know I have a couple other devices here that are worth it to me. I have this guy right here. This is a banana pie. I'm gonna go ahead and check out. It actually kind of has a uh, bit of a unique form factor there. And actually, this right here is another banana pie product that is a bit dramatic. Now this, is a single board computer. It's actually technically a, a single board router, but I'm gonna use it as a computer, damn it. Look, it has M2. I mean, it has some M.2 and some mini PCIe. Got all the uh, Pogo pins your heart can desire. And SATA? Subscribe if you do not wanna miss this video. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.